right, so let's talk about my January reads. I have made it my intention to be a little bit more concise with my wrap-up videos because I find that I tend to ramble a little bit and feel the need to hit every single point of my reflections upon reading in order to give you a hugely well-rounded review, but I think that I am okay just giving you concise points of why I liked it and a brief synopsis of each book. So in the vein of efficiency, let's just get started. I am going to talk about the paperbacks that I read this month first. I started the year with The Seas by Samantha Hunt. The Seas follows an unnamed female narrator who lives in a coastal fishing town with her mother. Eleven years prior, her father committed suicide by walking into the ocean and drowning himself. Now the two women keep a solemn vigil looking out for their respective husband and father. Before he died, however, he convinced his daughter that she was a mermaid and to this day as a young adult where we start reading the book, she still believes that she's a mermaid. She falls in love with a man named Jude who was an war veteran who is 13 years her senior. We get some very intoxicating descriptions of suffering through unrequited love. I have some notes here. There's two quotes that I wrote down because I think they're brilliant and how they describe this hunger that the narrator has for Jude. Some nights I want Jude so badly I imagine giving birth to him. I pretend to sweat, I toss and wring my insides out. Mostly I think this is because that's how badly I want Jude's head between my legs. And then there's another part that I wrote as well. Jude thinks he's too old for me. I think I could cut a strip of flesh from his upper arm and eat it. And how I would describe this book is certainly psychological, not just in the mind of a young woman, but psychological in terms of isolation. They live in a very tight and somewhat small-minded community. We are getting the psychology of a man who has endured war and has seen violence every day. That being said, grief and PTSD are at the heart of the story. Safe to say that was a firm 4 out of 5 for me. The next paperback that I read and I am going to talk about is The High Road by Edna O'Brien. Once again, we have a seaside town, this time on the Mediterranean coast. So it is following a cast of female characters. There is Anna, who is the primary narrator of the story, who feels that her emotional life has kind of crumbled since ending a relationship with a man. She is sort of escaping this failed romance in this Mediterranean coast and she is revived when she meets a woman named Catalina. The other characters include Iris, who is an older, more flamboyant woman. There is also a young woman named Charlotte, who is escaping her life as a debutante to live in a more bohemian style as a new person. It's a beautiful story about the pockets of our identities that we keep concealed and really how we can't outrun our inherent sorrow. It is also worth mentioning that it is a queer love story. So if you enjoyed that, you will like this as well. And I also loved this book, um, another four out of five for me. All right, so the next paperback that I will talk about is Dictation by Cynthia Ozick. This one did not do it for me. I really enjoyed Antiquities by the same author, but this compact read just did not hit. It's a collection of four short stories and comedy that have to do with deception and revenge. It's about the fallibility of the human character. Ozick is certainly devious and sardonic in her storytelling. However, I found myself quite bored reading a lot of these stories. I would say that the most Compelling of the four is the first story in which Ozick has fictionalized the relationship between writers 
Henry James and Joseph Conrad and has formulated a kind of rivalry between their two secretaries. That was strong, which makes sense as to why it was the leading story, but the others kind of just faded in their brilliance. So unfortunately, that was more of a two star for me. Next paperback is Cracks by Sheila Kohler. And this follows the disappearance of a young girl named Fiamma in a South African independent girls school. 40 years later, 13 members of the missing girls swimming team gather at their old school for a reunion and look back on the long weekend in which Fiamma disappeared. As they reflect, the women relive the horror of a long buried secret. So while reading this story, you're wondering what this dark secret is. The narrative as a whole is incredibly dark. It is a story of adolescent violence and jealousy, certainly trigger warnings for underage relationships. There is rape involved. It is a queer story in which a lot of these girls are contemplating their sexualities. They are continuously sort of wondering out loud about their attraction to a female teacher who is also their swim coach. Yeah, it's kind of like a dark sex drama, murder mystery. It's a lot. I enjoyed it. It was fucked up though. I know when I finished reading it, I kind of put it down. I was just like, what did I just read? So bear that in mind. There's a lot of sensitive topics to rummage through, but um, that was like a solid three, three and a half for me. All right, so I am now getting into books that I either read on my Kindle or listened to on audio. So the first audiobook of the year for me was Hysteria by Jessica Gross. In Hysteria, we meet a young woman an hour into yet another alcohol-fueled masochistic sexual bender at her local bar. And there's a new bartender there whom she begins hooking up with and she is consumed with the idea that this bartender is Freud. And through this sexual liaison, she's using him as a reflection on her own behavior. She starts to examine her actions and why she tends to pursue either unavailable men or men who are older. Um, there is one relationship in particular with a colleague of her father's. As is typical Freudian fashion, there is a comical twist on the Oedipus complex, and it's an incredibly bizarre story, but um, it's perceptive and honest and just goofy, but <laughs> this was another three and a half for me. The next audiobook that I read in January was Sin by Josephine Hart. It follows the narrator Ruth, who views her half-sister Elizabeth as having cheated her of the status of firstborn. She believes she doesn't receive the same privileges as Elizabeth because Elizabeth was in her parents' life first. Throughout the novel, basically, Ruth's intention is to make Elizabeth as unhappy as possible, to rob her of any experiences, of any men that she wants, likes, just to make her absolutely miserable. And this is her way of getting revenge and obtaining that, um, firstborn status. Uh, this was kind of a, a fun one, but it was not substantial enough for me, so this was more of a two star. All right, so the next book that I want to talk about, I read on my Kindle, and this was the first five star read of 2023. I loved it a lot, and that is Heaven by Emerson Whitney. This is nonfiction by a trans non-binary author. It follows his relationship to their mother and grandmother and how they served as the first windows and to womanhood and the consequences and complications of womanhood and how 
he has kind of defined himself by how he is related to his mother and his grandmother. It is a emotionally devastating story about a mother's alcoholism and how Emerson is finding themselves through a traumatic personal history and how they are also unlearning the idea that their traumatic history is the source of their gender dysphoria. So at the center of this memoir is really the analysis of why we believe that there has to be a cause for coming out as gay, coming out as transgender, coming out as non-binary, when in actuality this is who you are, this is an identity that is inherent to you and isn't sparked by any one solid event. Heaven was a proper reckoning. It was gorgeous and poetic and I urge you all to read it. And the last three books I will not be talking about in this wrap-up video are In Other Words by Jhumpa Lahiri, The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion, and Housekeeping by Marilyn Robinson because I just talked about them in my recent reading vlog, which you can watch here. So concludes <laughs> January wrap-up. I read a total of 10 books which I think is excessive for me. Um, I was actually just talking to Becky, who by the way has a channel now. I will link her channel down below. And we were discussing how January always seems to be like really heavy on the reading because we're kind of just excited to start fresh. We have this huge TBR that we're just ready to get into, but by February and March, kind of that number of books just cuts down to half because now we're settling into our regular pace so I definitely think by next month I will be back to maybe five or six titles a month um, maybe ten again if I'm really lucky or really bored and filling a lot of my time with reading but we shall see currently I am reading The Country Life by Rachel Cusk and I am listening to Young Bloomsbury by Nino Stratchies. I will be discussing those next month. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've read any of these as well, please uh, add a comment below. Tell me what you thought of these books. Let me know what you plan on reading in the next month. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I post every Wednesday and Saturday and I will see you in the next video. Bye!